a trigger warning disclaimer or a disclaimer of, hey, I am not a doctor. If you use this, this is for informational purposes only. If you choose to use this, then you as the end user are fully responsible. We are not. If for some reason the direct pressure and elevation didn't work and we're still talking about a low volume capillary or a low to medium volume venous bleed, or if, if that didn't work, I'm gonna to upgrade to a uh, wound packing and pressure dressing. Or if this is a high volume venous bleed where I'm losing a lot of blood quickly, I don't have time to sit here and wait that 10 minutes while I'm losing blood still uh, and losing that precious volume. I don't have time to wait that 10 minutes to see whether or not direct pressure worked. I can kind of tell if it's a high volume of blood that I'm losing that I need to kind of upgrade immediately to wound packing and a pressure dressing. So with or without a hemostatic agent, it kind of works the same. If you have something like quick clot and you can intervene with that quickly, then go ahead and do so. And this is impregnated gauze. It's already S-rolled. What you want to do with your wound packing, and this is a very shallow wound, but we do have a wound cavity here. All right, understand that we're not just a bag of blood that you can sew a hole shut like you're sewing up an air mattress or patch a hole like an air mattress or using duct tape or sutures or anything like that. The blood has to be in the vessels to be delivered to the tissue, right? So just covering this wound up as kind of a fix it and forget it kind of thing doesn't work. Uh, you need to pack material all the way down into that cavity because that needs to be up against the actual ruptured vessel to actually effectively stop the bleed. So we're gonna fill that entire wound cavity with this clotting agent, and you're gonna pack it as tightly as you possibly can. And that puts that clotting agent and this impregnated gauze right down against the actual bleeding vessel, and that's gonna be a lot more effective at stopping the bleed. And you wanna pack this as tightly as you possibly can. So when we cover this with a pressure dressing, we want to apply that pressure directly down into that cavity against those vessels. So once that's packed, you can take the rest of it, you keep it in a ball, and put that directly on top. Now from there, maintain that pressure, and just get you some gauze if you need additional material to pack into this wound. If you don't need additional material, you can go straight to either an Israeli dressing or an emergency trauma dressing. I'll start with the Israeli first. Pull that out of the package. I'll pick those up later. And when you open up your dressing, it's another reason to carry shears. When you open up these dressings, you're gonna find that you have kind of the beginning, and then you have a reasonably sterile or reasonably clean section right here. That section needs to go directly over that. And then the newer Israeli dressings actually have a stitch that kind of holds that in place so that if you're working one hand and you drop that, this doesn't go down into the dirt. So you take that and place it directly over the wound. You're trading this pressure for that. Maintain that pressure with your thumb and begin to wrap this around the bottom. Now I want this pressure bar to end up directly on top of that wound, so I need to adjust it a little bit. Probably about right there. And then I'm gonna start wrapping this around. And this is kind of a tug to a trade pressure. So you're pulling pressure with the dressing to replace the pressure you're putting down here. You're gonna drop that directly into the pressure bar. And then you're gonna pull the opposite direction. And when you pull the opposite direction, this pressure bar will go from laying flat to being vertical, and that needs to be directly down on top of the wound, just like that. Then you're gonna begin wrapping. 
I just broke that stitch that was holding it all together. So that's by design. And you want to cover both edges to keep dirt and debris out of there and keep the wound a little bit cleaner. So again, I'm tugging and wrapping to keep that pressure on. Once I get to the end, I'm going to have another cleat. I've got room to go one more. Once I get to the end, I've got another cleat here. And all you do with that is slide your finger under one section, slide that on, and then bring up the other edge with your finger and drop it into the cleat on the other side. That holds it in place. The pressure bar is directly over the wound. That wound has been packed with a clotting agent or with some regular gauze if you didn't have a clotting agent. And then from there, what you wanna do is make sure that you didn't put it on too tight, right? And to check that, you can check what's called CMS, which is circulation, motor, and sensory. Uh, typically, I do that for breaks and sprains, but at a minimum, what I need to do is make sure that I still have circulation to the rest of this extremity past this actual intervention, this actual dressing right here. And to do that, you can do what's called a capillary refill. So if you push on the nail bed and release, when you push on the nail bed, it'll turn white. And when you release, it'll start to bring color back into it. It'll turn pink. So it should be back to its normal color within the amount of time it takes to say capillary refill. So push on the nail bed, capillary refill, this is good to go. If it doesn't fill up within the time it takes to say capillary refill, then this is probably too tight and you've put on a bit of a tourniquet effect rather than the pressure dressing that you wanted to put on there. All right, so that is your wound packing and your pressure dressing using quick clot and a Israeli dressing, an Israeli bandage in this case. Check your capillary refill, this one's good. If this is effective, you're gonna recheck it every 10 minutes or so. If this is effective at controlling the bleeding, then problem solved. If this is not effective at controlling the bleeding, then your upgrade from here to stop this bleed is to move directly into a tourniquet. So if you don't have any type of hemostatic agent, that's fine. You can use regular gauze to pack a wound. Uh, in this case, I'm just using some compressed gauze. But same principle applies. It just doesn't have that clotting agent that makes it clot faster. But you still wanna pack that wound cavity as tightly as possible and get that gauze material down against the ruptured vessel. And then whatever leftover material you have, you wanna just place that right on top and that'll give some additional pressure when you put the pressure dressing on top of it. So that is your wad of material up on top. And you're gonna maintain pressure here. And I don't have an Israeli to use on this one. So I'm gonna use an emergency trauma dressing, which is essentially a Israeli dressing that has been simplified, All right? It's still very similar, but it doesn't have the pressure bar in place. So very similar look when you pull it out. You've still got your dressing. That dressing goes directly over. Pull this under. And then replacing pressure that you had on with your thumb with pressure on the dressing. Get that to capture, it's got some Velcro underneath here. Then as I come over, what you'll do with this one because you don't have that pressure bar is come directly over top of the wound and you're going to twist the dressing 
to kind of create that hourglass shape and that fold goes directly over the wound and pull tight. Cover up your edges just like you did before. So I'll typically go over both edges after I do the hourglass over the top and then when I come back over the top again I'll go ahead and place another fold in there directly on top of the wound and continue out. Once I get to the end, instead of a clip on this particular one, I've got some Velcro. There are some that do have a clip on the end that you clip in just like we did the Israeli. But again, check to make sure you still have a pulse or check that capillary refill. So much the same, it's just a different way of doing the exact same thing. The same principles apply. If you don't have an Israeli dressing and you don't have an emergency trauma dressing, you can improvise using just a simple elastic bandage or an ace wrap. Still maintaining that pressure and you're trading out pressure from this bandage with the pressure you placed on manually with your hand. You'll bring that around at least one full time. As you come up over the dressing, twist it just like we did before. And you want that to cross directly over top of the wound. Pull tight. I'll wrap this around both sides. And then I'll come back over the center. Every time I come over the center, I'm placing another hourglass shape twist in there. And I'll continue around until I get to the end of my dressing. Over one side, over the other. Coming up over the center. Place a twist in directly over the top of the wound. And this one is handy because it has Velcro. Let's secure that in place. Check that radial pulse. Check the capillary refill to make sure you haven't created any sort of tourniquet effect. That's another way that you can do this if you don't have an Israeli or an emergency trauma dressing. We got a mess here. Should have brought a trash bag. I'm gonna throw it in that. I'm gonna leave it in the rental car and they'll be like, what, what happened in here, man? Is there a crime committed in this? <laughs> right, so for, as far as improvising the, the actual direct pressure and elevation for a low volume kind of capillary bleed or low volume to medium volume venous bleed, if you don't have dressings, you know, first off, why don't you? Second off, um, you can improvise with cotton material. And again, if I'm trying to get bleeding under control for the first time, what I'm not gonna do is take the time while this is bleeding actively to sterilize or disinfect these bandages. I'm gonna use whatever I have to place directly on the wound. In this case, it's just a ripped up piece of cotton. It could be a bandana or a shemag. Place that directly over the wound with direct pressure and I'm gonna elevate that, all right? And after about 10 minutes, I'm gonna reassess and see whether or not this is working. If it is working, I'm gonna go ahead and place a bandage over that to hold it in place and kind of keep it clean. Then I can worry about the next time I change those dressings out and get this bleeding under control, I can worry about irrigating this wound, cleaning up uh, soap and water or just water, uh, and then changing it out with some bandaging and dressing material that's as clean as possible. But for your initial intervention when you're trying to stop the bleed, there's no reason to worry about a tertiary problem of infection. Uh, if you have clean material, then use it, of course. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Stop the bleed. That's the most important thing. Now, if after that 10 minutes is up, if this didn't work, then I'm going to think about moving up and upgrading to a pressure dressing and wound packing, which we'll talk about later. But if it is effective, again, I'm just placing this material on here to absorb the blood. And that blood absorption is going to help and assist with the clotting. And a lot of times this is all you need for those low volume bleeds. And then I'm going to take another piece of cotton, and I'm going to use that as my bandage material, all right? So covering up all the dressing to kind of keep the junk out of there as best I can. I'm just going to wrap that up. 
And for this, I've just split the ends right here because I need to be able to tie it off. I'll take one end around this way, and then I'll tie it off using this. And I don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on it. There's no need to. I just want to tie it off so that it doesn't come loose. And it doesn't have to be a fancy knot. You can tie it just like you tie your shoes. But that'll hold that in place. Now I can worry about the tertiary problem of infection. So I'll disinfect some bandaging material and I'll irrigate and clean the wound after the bleeding's under control. And then I'll change this bandage at least every once every 24 hours. Uh, so that's kind of an improvisation. And again, we don't improvise on purpose. We improvise when we run out of other material or for some reason we find ourselves unprepared.